Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Good evening. Um, well, it's 10.23 on a Monday night. Um, we're here to talk about the movie, as you can see, uh, Top Gun Maverick, which is the long-awaited sequel to Top Gun, which came out in 1986. Um, man, that many years back. Uh, so you, I actually wonder why, because Top Gun was a big hit. Um, it is one of those movies which uh, I'll be I'll be very honest until until the time that I was like 20 uh, or something I loved the the soundtrack a lot more than the movie um, I think I still do I think the soundtrack is actually um, an amazing soundtrack some really awesome numbers in there favorite of mine which is the theme uh, Top Gun theme uh, with a guitar playing by uh, Steve Stevens and compos composed by Harold Faltermeyer but. Um, for some reason this is one of the movies and I am a big Tom Cruise fan uh, although it took me a long time to actually become a, a real fan of his um, I think as you go grew older I become much more of a supporter of his movies and I look forward to watching his films as well so uh, but for some reason I've only watched the, the movie a couple of times since uh, maybe the late 80s now I think I watched it a couple of times with my cousin uh, during that late 80s stage, maybe like up to 1991 or something. And then I've only watched the movie uh, once, I guess. So not too many times. Uh, but yeah, it is a very famous film, of course. Uh, I wanted to rewatch the movie before uh, so I can do a proper review of it. Fit, but anyway, we had to talk about Maverick. So, movie is a 2022 blockbuster film made over 1 million at the box office which is an achievement I think it's the first Tom Cruise movie to actually make that much money to go over the 1 million uh, mark uh, directed by Joseph Kosinski it is a sequel to the 1986 film like I just mentioned and it's only the second installment uh, from what I read there are plans to have uh, a couple of spin-offs from this um, okay so you've got um, Tom Cruise returning to his old role as Maverick. Uh, Val Kilmer also reprising his role. I haven't seen Val Kilmer in a movie for a very long time. I mean, of course, uh, other than the uh, the second Batman film, which I have watched multiple times, but I haven't watched him in a movie for a long time. Nice to see him. Uh, also, <coughs> excuse me, those are the only two characters who are reprising their roles from the original film. Rest everybody is new. You've got Miles Stella, Jennifer Connelly, John Hamm, uh, Glenn Powell, Louis Pullman, and Ed Harris. John Hamm, a um, really good actor, but I haven't actually watched him in more than like a couple of films, two or three films I think at the most, uh, because I haven't watched that show that he's very popularly known for. But I have seen him in a couple of other movies. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yep. And um, well, basically, it's 30 years later, his behavior, even though he's a very, very, very decorated um, um, uh, what do you call United States Navy captain uh, test pilot his behavior his uh, his penchant for bending the rules um, has not let, let him go above in the ranks in fact at one point in the film they at least I think Ed Harris's character says you should have been a two star general by now or admiral by now sorry so he is still a captain and uh, he is basically protected by his friend Ice, uh, Tom Iceman Kaczynski. Um, oh, sorry, forgot to mention that his name is Pete Maverick Mitchell. And um, Ice is now a commander of the US, US Pacific Fleet, but he is uh, dying of cancer. That's, you know, um, one of the things about the movie that was really touching the, the friendship between the two of them. And um, so he's got this dark star pro program which uh, they've taken a lot of funding uh, is an admiral rear admiral kane is actually coming the ed harris character to put a stop to it however he pushes the uh, limit and breaks the mark 10 barrier however the uh, aircraft is damaged and lost i mean well, it's basically destroyed so they send him to the what is that? Some some island they actually mentioned where the Top Gun, uh, Top Gun, uh, sorry, Top Gun, um, 
uh, graduates are, um, and uh, sorry, NAS North Island, and he's got a new assignment there. Um, he's got to report to the uh, to John Ham's character, which is VADM, uh, Vice Admiral, uh, something something. <laughs> I don't know, the United States, um, but most military ranks are beyond me. I don't really understand the difference. His name is Bo Cyclone Simpson. He's the commander of the Naval Air Forces. So he tells them that there is a unsanctioned uran uranium enrichment plant. Where? I have no idea. And uh, it is in a deep depression at the end of a canyon. So I'm not sure where this place is supposed to be, which country. Is it in the United States? It's somewhere else. So they have to. He has to basically train these um, young uh, young um, uh, pilots to actually go and uh, take you know, finish uh, complete the mission, destroy the plant, and get back safely. Um, he is supposed to be training them. So that's the whole story. You also have. Um, this character, uh, Miles Teller, who plays uh, Lieutenant Bradley Rooster Bradshaw, he is the son of um, the late Goose, uh, Nick Bradshaw, uh, who was the best friend of uh, Pete Mitchell growing up, uh, well, sorry, Pete Mitchell, and he dies in the first phase, killed in the first movie. So there's a little bit of um, a rift between the both of them. Um, Maverick hadn't want him, wanted him to become a pilot because his mother had asked him uh, to not let her son join, um, you know, dissuade him some or the other. So he actually uh, tried to put a stop it to it and um, there's an unspoken drift between them. They don't actually see eye to eye on anything else. Jennifer Connelly plays the, uh, uh, it's a former love interest who's got, a, who's got a single mom, who's a single mom and a bar owner. She's got a young daughter and I think the weakest parts of this film are basically when she is kind of like, especially that first meeting of them in the uh, not first meeting in the in basically in the night where they where he come to drink and uh, it's kind of like she's acting cutish, but she is gorgeous. I I wouldn't say that, but for someone who's her age, I, I don't know. It just felt kind of odd. Uh, just felt kind of kind of funny. I would have expected something like that from a woman who is in her 20s, maybe early 30s. But not that kind of a approach from her. I don't know, it just felt a little funny. Odd to me, that's all I would say. I'm not, like, you know, I'm not dumping on the actress. I happen to adore her. I think she's a good actress. And I think she's absolutely lovely as well. So, um, basically, at the end of it, he realizes that he's got to lead the team and uh, he like you know so that's the whole the th whole shebang basically he's got to get it done he's going to go do it he shows them the rest of the team that he is the man to listen to he needs to win their respect he does he um, uh, and finally he needs to win over uh, you know uh, the, the young son rooster uh, so at the end of course they go and they win the mission all that stuff you know it's very predictable that how the things are going to be done, but it's done very well. This is what an action movie, um, when it's done really well with you know fighter 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 planes, helicopters, missiles, weapons going all wrong, all of that stuff. Of course, is to uh, as they have claimed that this movie is a propaganda machine for the United States Navy for the military as such. I don't care. Uh, like I said, I don't really. I, I mentioned it in the in a previous. Um, I did mention it in a previous war movie, which was for 1917 for the review. Uh, that I don't tend to watch a lot of war movies. This isn't an actual war movie as such. Therefore, I kind of enjoyed it a lot more. But I get the criticisms. I don't happen to agree. Uh, well, maybe, uh, maybe I don't know. I happen to enjoy this movie completely thoroughly like there's just few flaws here and there um, saddest part was of course the death of uh, ice um, now Mitchell gets finally gets a life for himself I actually thought they might kill him off in the movie uh, because I didn't read any reviews going into this so I didn't know what was going to happen to him I thought he might end up getting killed saving rooster and getting the mission done and all that stuff they 
but really didn't think that was what he was going to do or um, he might retire at the end uh, he does patch up things with uh, penny and they you know they link into their love for each other and uh, looks like he's going to end up uh, starting his you know making the family that they that he was supposed to have had with uh, her and her young daughter but uh, they don't really go too deep into that, but yes, we do understand that that's what happens at the end. And that's basically it. Um, I thought acting-wise, nothing major to say over here. You have the usual uh, blowhard kind of stuff between the uh, military people. It just looks like they all want to <laughs> bash each other up. There is off. There is the butt of the jokes. Um, What's his name? The guy who plays Bob. Lewis Fullman plays uh, Robert Bob uh, Floyd. And he was the butt of jokes for a lot of things. There is the uh, hotshot female uh, pilot as well, of course. And I don't think it's, it was really bad the way that she acted. I mean, sometimes they tend to go a little crazy with, these, uh, with some of these films. But uh, when you have the character, like they're so cliched. I don't think it was cliche at all, um, but uh, it did start to look like that at the very beginning. Monica Bar Barbaro, I've never seen anything before, who played Lieutenant Natasha Felix Trace. And um, the other guy who clashes with uh, Rooster quite a lot, um, he was the character named Hangman, Glenn Powell, again another actor I've never heard before. Glenn Powell who plays Lieutenant Jake Hangman. Saracen. That's the whole movie. These are my thoughts about the film. Go watch it if you haven't. It is it's thoroughly enjoyable. It's a fantastic film if you want to watch those kind of action movies. And uh, you know, I think you'll really enjoy the, your afternoon or evening's worth if you haven't. I think it's off the theaters. Um, I watched it on streaming services. So yeah, that's basically it. And um, that's my review for Top Gun. I'm going to give it Top Gun Maverick, sorry. I'm going to give it for an action film of this kind of nature. I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10. Well worth watching and keeping in your collection. So someday down the line, I'll try to watch Top Gun um, once again. I think the last time I watched Top Gun was probably like 10 years ago and give my review for that particular film. Oh, I think I enjoyed that movie a lot more perhaps, but it's been a while, so I don't really know. Anyway, thank you guys. Have a good night.